be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy of the abundance of your grace and mercy, to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love, and we worship you, crying out, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he will give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. We worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gather the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and cry out, on Friday, the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday, a lance pierced his side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow. On Friday, he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace. Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory, and in its light see you, the true Bridegroom. In your grace make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Lamb of a God who sacrificed yourself for us, we give you thanks. O holy incense of forgiveness, we worship you for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us up by your ascension and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance, so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you now and forever. Amen. is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Bark marble. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you once lived following the age of this world following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the desires of our flesh, following the wishes of the flesh and the impulses, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ, by grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, 
It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. Praise be to God. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, When they had finished breakfast, Simon, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend my sheep. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was distressed that he had asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and to go where you wished but when you grow old, you shall stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and lead you where you do not desire to go. Now he said this signifying what manner of death he would suffer, by which he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. This is the truth, peace be with you. And by nature, we were children of the wrath 
like the rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The letter to the epistle, the epistle to the Ephesians is one of what we call the captive, letters of captivity. St. Paul is an old man and he's imprisoned and he has spent the last three decades contemplating the plan of God, the divine economy, the work that God accomplishes in the world. And it's clear in these letters, Ephesians, Colossians, that he is in complete admiration and awe of what God is accomplishing in the world. That the spirit of God that is present in the world, moving hearts and gathering in individuals. So that this epistle, which I always encourage you to read, it's short, it's only six chapters. But the first three chapters of this epistle are like a liturgical proclamation that we have. So after the 11 o'clock mass, we have a baptism today. And during the apoclesis and the blessing and the consecration of the waters, there's a diaconal proclamation that goes on and on. It's very long in the first place, but it's repeated while the blessing is taking place. This is the notion of the spirit that the churches has picked up. The spirit that works everywhere and touching the hearts of the individuals draws them into the body of Christ. So St. Paul in his imprisonment now in his 60s, having spent these last 30 years contemplating this whole thing, has in the first three chapters of this epistle this magnificent vision of what God is trying to accomplish among us and what, for those who respond, what he is actually accomplishing. Chapters 4, 5, and 6 are about the body of the church, how the church functions and how it is all the revelation of the mystery of God. And the mystery of God for St. Paul is the incarnation of the world word in all of his glory. That from the beginning of creation, before time even began, God's plan, the hidden plan that God had was to reveal himself in his son in the incarnation. You can picture St. Paul prostrate in his prison cell, in the darkness, in the damp, before the glory and the majesty of God, just in awe at his goodness. But he says it's important for us to keep in mind, we were like everyone else, children of wrath. The anger of God was upon us by the things that we chose to do. And we were like all the rest, always remembering that the foundation of the church is ecclesia, this Greek word that we use, it is the calling out. Those who are being assembled in the body of Christ. St. John in his epistle talks about the gathering in of all the children of God, wherever they may be, it's reflected in our prayers also. This idea that there are in every generation the children who will respond to God's work, to God's grace, to the Spirit of God. It's something that we've lost a vision of in the modern world because we've been so used and blessed throughout centuries in which so much of the world was actually Christian, not just as individuals, but precisely as it's meant to be, as families, as villages, as towns, as cities, as entire nations of people who were Christian, whose vision was of this incorporation and being brought in, and who appreciated the fact that we were no longer the children of wrath because God is good to us. The beginning of this chapter two, which is what the reading is today, he says, when we were dead in our sins, God loved us and in his charity he sent his spirit to us to transform us. The church exists for one reason and it is not for social welfare or becoming an NGO, it is a gathering in. It is a bringing in together all of the children of God into the body of Christ and to be transformed within that. And then from there, there will be the works of charity and of mercy. We were discussing this last night. That when we look at the work of the church, she is actually fundamentally inward looking, which sounds peculiar to people at times but she's inward looking so as to gather in. She knows who she is, the body of Christ. She's aware of the apostolic faith, the salvation, the healing that is brought by this healing word, which is the essence and the church. And so that inward look is precisely to be able to bring others in. When we read the history of the church, or the history of the Western world, 
from the time of our Lord's ascension until finally when Constantine makes it legal for 300 years and people being slaughtered and sometimes truly being slaughtered and massacred by the thousands, like under Diocletian. Other times it's momentary, depending on who's at, but throughout the 300 years, on and off, there are the persecutions of killing something that the world does not understand, does not like, despises, and vents its hatred on. Those are the children of wrath. It's not like we're all the same. It just happens that some people go to mass on occasion. We are not all the same. We are transformed in an inner glory by this grace of God's love that loved us while we were offending him and sent his son to die on Calvary and to rise from the dead, to die for the healing of our wounds and the love in order to restore us. All St. Paul is doing in his last days, he's going to be martyred in about four years in Rome and in this imprisonment. All he wants us to understand is the tremendous gift that God has given us interiorly to transform us. And because the Christians historically have always had this vision, this is why people kept being gathered in and gathered in, in the first century, in the second century, in the third century. And the numbers kept increasing because that body had a vitality and it, and it healed its own and it brought more in because of the example of the people who knew what God was and who knew the mercy of God and who wanted, other, wanted others to share in that mercy. Again, it's not an NGO. It's not for organizing soup kitchens and this. Those things will flow from once the church is actually in her vitality. When the members of Christ are in their full vitality with the appreciation of God's charity and of God's mercy for us, it will transform the world. And this is why throughout the prayers that we see in the Psalm, Psalm 95, that the gods of the Gentiles are demons. Christians have always seen that, the Jews have always seen that. And that's why as the numbers increased of Christians, now that when you have the ability, you started tearing down those temples. Because they're filled with evil, deception. Not, oh, isn't it beautiful, we love Buddhism. No, there was an understanding that these are all derailments. Doesn't mean that people are to be put to death, but the religion itself is blinding. The philosophical idea is blinding. And because of this reason, it moves and it moves and it moves. And a perfect example of it is in the late 300s, in the time and the life of St. Augustine and St. Ambrose. You know, you can legalize Christianity at the beginning of the fourth century, but it doesn't mean everyone becomes Christian. But when it's legalized, you remove the obstacles for all those weak people who have seen it, who have known Christians, and who would like to join, but it's illegal, I'm not going to do it. When I was in Geneva, you could go to the very level of the fourth century church that was once there under the cathedral. You go from the 13th century building down to a 10th century building, remodeling down to the fourth century building. Because Christianity has been there almost certainly from at least the beginning of the middle of the second century, Geneva. And what is exquisite when you go down there is you see a church that's there that acted certainly as a cathedral. It was the church for Geneva. And then you notice that in the same archeological digs at the level of the fourth century, they build another big, another building as large. So imagine being in central Maine that we'd have to build a building this exact same size next to us because we had so many people coming to be instructed to find that healing and that mercy of God. It's an extraordinary thing to see. It's impossible to imagine. It has a level, it has a raised walkway that goes out to a middle ambo, where clearly the catechists had people surrounding him all around the church so he could teach them and catechize them. That's in the 300s. It built up and built up and sown in the blood of the martyrs. It's not that the people of the world suddenly decided, okay, let's just let Christianity do her thing. No, the world was brought into Christianity and healed. This is what St. Paul says. We were once like them too, children of the wrath, waiting punishment, waiting damnation. They don't like to say that these days. But St. Augustine was very clear. Humanity is wounded, it is disoriented, and it walks for much of its existence in blindness. So he uses the term the massa damnata, 
the condemned mass of humanity on its way to hell. Our anaphoras still end with our prayers this way. Save us from damnation. Save us from that state of separation. But unless we appreciate what the fires of hell are and what a permanent state of separation from God is, we will never understand his mercy. Mercy is reduced down to some sugary, nice feeling. That's not mercy. When you go and you help your neighbor, you aid them because she's sick, that's mercy. But you do that because you appreciate what health is and you, you are sympathetic. You suffer with her. That she can't come out of her house, that she can't get the things, the minimal things done. She can't even clean herself. These minimal things that are done. When we understand what the permanent state of separation from God is, being children of the wrath, and then when you die in that state, that's all that hell is, is to continue in a state of separation. But now it's permanent. This is a beautiful epistle. And not about, because it's about, it doesn't, it's not about damnation. It's about, look what we have been saved from. Blindness, delusion, self-centeredness, separation from God. So I encourage you to read the whole epistle. It is a great hymn, especially the first three chapters. They are a hymn to the graciousness of God's merciful love because he saved us. While we were still enemies of his, still spitting in his face, he's still trying to work away in us to try to bring us toward himself because he knows that this is the only possible way we can be healed. There is no salvation outside of Christ. And so on this day, we render thanks on the feast of Our Lady of the Seeds, of life, of vitality, of fruitfulness. And we ask that she intercede for us to obtain a vision of appreciation of gratitude for what God has truly done for us, transforming not only our individual lives, but also that of the world. And that transformation, as we mentioned in the history of the church, you see as the senators in Rome keep changing, it becomes the argument over this statue that is in the Senate of victory. This goddess who was there. And when the senators would come in, they would throw incense onto the charcoal brazier in front, making an offering to victory. But that transformation is exactly what happens because the church looks inward in order to draw people into that salvation path. And so we ask the mother of God that she obtain for us this vision of profound gratitude for what God is working within us and what he desires to accomplish through us. It's a great vocation with a lot of burden, but it is glorious, honorable, and transformative. May her prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in the prayer and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Tervot madam he dalo ho, halot alo ho dam padita yo. Painem so go taibo tao, keo lal vita fresco de fire glow, or go de shaukham. your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
continue with the Anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. and security in your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever Amen O oh Lord we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies that we may raise glory and thanks to you, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. Sabahulam, 
כל חול, חול נודן איתה, פחר אודיר, דחלוף אייקון וחלוף סגיים, מתח סייר מתיהר, חוסוין חומי וחוי דן חלם עלמי. אדם זכרו מן חמרו ומן מאיו ברך הוא קודש ויה בן תלמידה קרא מר סב אשתו מנה כל חוד חונו דניתה דמו דילדי עתיקי חדתו דח לב פייקון וח לב סגיים מת אשר ומת יהד חוסוין חמי וחי דן חלם עלמי You do so in memory of me until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, lover, people we remember your plan of salvation and we ask you to have mercy on your worshipers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time to reward all people justly according to their deeds for this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your father saying have mercy on us almighty father O oh Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you to make it a life giving. Have compassion on us, O oh God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Annin morio, annin morio, annin morio, nite moro rojo chayu karisho, onachen alain al korbono hono. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith. 
with blameless lives and with purity and holiness. May they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them, for you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, and Saint Joseph, Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Kuduchun. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and with holiness, so that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask Him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins 
and for the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son, and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation, and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.